times this season. Each team winning eight, two games left this weekend. No mystery surrounding today's starters. Ross Detweiler makes his fourth appearance against the Marlins. The Nats face Mark Burley for the third time, who will come up big and walk off the winner today. First pitch soon on Messon. bobblehead day at the ballpark the real thing has a 12 game hitting streak and his buddy over at shorty and desmond nine of his last 10 hitting safely so get yourself all stretched out have a nice afternoon with us here on masson the nats and the marlins whoever wins this one clinches a tie for the season series this year Ball on Masson, brought to you by Jeep. Visit Jeep.com to learn more. And by AT&T. 
the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. Well, there's the great Josh Gibson, Frank Howard out there, the big train, Walter Johnson, Washington baseball greats, and maybe some of the guys on this field today will join those ranks someday. Visit train.com for an independent train. Comfort specialist dealer near you. It's hard to stop a train. It is muggy. It is 84 degrees. Possible thunderstorms. There's big time activity to the northwest of us right now. And a big front approaching the D.C. area. We'll just keep our fingers crossed. Marlins are 14th in the league in runs and 12th in hitting. You wouldn't know it the way they go at the Nats. Jose Reyes is on a seven game hitting streak. Nine hits during that time. He is six in the league with 157 hits. And he's tied for first in triples. Had a couple last night. And he has 11 on the year, batting 284. I think they would put him back in the leadoff spot. Probably the best in the business. Ross Deadwater's been good against the Marlins in his career. Five games, two starts, 2-0 two oh with a 1.53. Last time out on September 3rd against the Cubs. Got the 2-1 to one win out dueling Jeff Smarja. Pitched seven scoreless innings, giving up just four hits struck out three walk three through 93 pitches 62 of them for strikes let's check out the stg inside the numbers on ross deadweiler fastball 80 percent of the time averaging 93 he'll throw it to 95 it plays more like 97 because of the deception in his delivery curveball change to go with it to find out why employees choose stg visit stg.com gorkis hernandez center fielder who came over from the Pirates. And he takes one low and inside. We're underway at 106 here at Nationals Park. Marlins are 62 and 77. Nats are 85 and 53. That's the only thing uneven about this season series is their overall records because the Marlins played the Nats like they're tied for first. Hernandez 165 overall, 194 in 26 games. As a Marlin, fouls went off to the right. 25-year-old outfielder, had a birthday yesterday. Todd Titchener is the home plate umpire, third year in the big leagues. Tony Randazzo, Bob Davidson, and Brian Gorman, the crew chief, are the veteran guys on this crew. Deadwater goes with a breaking ball, misses low. He hasn't given up more than three runs in any of his last four starts. In fact, he's only given up more than three runs once since the month of June. And a ball driven out of play right side. Coming off seven innings, uh, as FP mentioned, against the Cubs. 93 pitches, 62 strikes, and he's trying to become the Nats' fourth 10-game winner or more today. And then Edwin Jackson will have that shot tomorrow to join them. What a pitch. Didn't get the call. Three and two. Looked like a great fastball under the hands of Hernandez. You saw what Ross Detweiler just said right there. And very rarely do you see him turn his back to a home plate umpire. He planted that fastball right where he wanted it. Didn't get the call. That ball driven to left center. So after you don't get a strike three call, nothing good ever seems to happen. And Gorkis Hernandez hits it out of the park. His second major league home run. Yeah, new life for Hernandez, and he takes advantage. I think if you're Ross Detweiler, you're thinking, well, I just threw that fastball in off the plate, tried to shave the inside corner, didn't get the call, so maybe I need to get a little more plate. He did, and the result was a leadoff home run for the Marlins. That'll bring in Donovan Solano, who's riding a three-game hitting streak, six for 13. I don't know what the Nationals ever did to insult these guys, but they play our ball club tougher than they play anybody in the major leagues. And it's happened year after year. That's outside, 2-0. and oh. Solano, 2 for 3 against Deadwater, first time he saw him. And he was swinging on 2-0, and oh, and it might have been ball 3. Marlins on the road are 30 and 40 with their win last night. The Nationals at home 43 and 26. 
Still a seven and two homestand. So Ozzie Guillen first year tumultuous season his ball club really swinging the bats here so far today and Harper gathers that shot. And tough here Mazda defensive alignment for the Nationals today behind Ross Detweiler outfield from left to right Morse Harper worth infield on the left side Desmond and Zimmerman right side Espinosa LaRoche and Jesus Flores getting a nod behind the plate brought to you by your DC area Mazda dealers we believe if it's not worth driving it's not worth building what do you drive. There's Jose Reyes. From the right side, batting 272. Reyes all over the bases last night when he went three for six. A pair of RBI triples. One drove in a run, the other drove in two in the tenth. The real backbreaker in that game. Zimmerman robs him, throws it to LaRoche. Two down. How quick did he get to his feet? A yeah, great play just to stop that thing, but watch the athleticism of Ryan Zimmerman after he knocks it down, get to his feet in an instant. Up to his feet, get rid of it quick, ball in the air. Good scoop by LaRoche on the backside. We've seen that act before on both ends. Great play by the corners once again for the Nationals. Yeah, star in the scorebook for both the five and the three on that one. Bases empty, two outs, and here's John Carlos Stanton. And the Marlins have come out swinging the bats really well here today. Fastball up and in. Stanton sixth in the league with 60 extra base hits. Had two last night with a double and his 31st home run. Good fastball tailing away. Look quicker than 92. Ross works fast. Things tend to happen very quickly when he pitches. He works fast, but not as fast as his counterpart today. And Mark Burley. We will have to watch our between pitch comments today. <laughs> good pitch. Had good height. Got plate. Didn't get the call once again. Hmm. And after he doesn't get that call, Stanton's going to make it 2 nothing. What a blast that is, number 32. Ross Deadweiler giving up nine home runs all year. And the Marlins continue to swing against the Nats like they know what's coming. Two nothing. Well, they've proven all season long they're a good fastball hitting team. They showed that against Steven Strasburg a couple of times. They're showing it today against Ross Deadweiler. We talked about last outing for Deadweiler throwing his fastball almost 85% of the time. Very effective against the Cubs, but you know, center cut fastballs to guys with 31 home runs now 32. And somebody from the Nationals dugout has just been ejected. And I think it's Gio Gonzalez. Well, he's probably watching the same thing we're watching on the TV in the clubhouse. And seeing that Todd Titchener is missing some calls. That happened in a hurry, and Gio back. On his way up the tunnel. Ball one loan inside to Carlos Lee. We got an unhappy reliever in there too. Sean Burnett next to Davey Johnson. Well, let's see what we're seeing. They're watching this game on TV in the clubhouse and they're watching center cut fastballs right down the middle being called balls. Yeah, Deadwater gets that one strike count to Stanton. Maybe he, he doesn't throw that same pitch on the next one that was hit out of the park. Now he's going to gather himself, deal with what he's given here. And the Nats have to hope that when they bat, the zone's tight as well. Two balls, one strike. Carlos Lee mashing one up the middle. Five hard hit balls to start this game. You start to wonder who the first place team is here. As far as the calls go, usually first place team get the benefit of some borderline calls. That's how it goes. That's how it's always been. But today, early in this game, not the case. This might be a situation where Steve McCaddy may wait for the home plate umpire to hurry them up to get off the mound so he can have a word with Todd Titchener. So here comes the umpire. 
And let's see if there's any interaction here between the pitching coach and the home plate up the junior member of this crew. Steve is not going to turn around and show up the umpire but there is definitely dialogue going on right mm -hmm. here making it look like he's talking to Jesus Flores messages being sent. And it's starting to get not friendly. Well Felipe Lou always used to have a saying if we as players are ready to play you as an umpire have to be ready to ump and you could make the argument early in this game that day game after a night game he's not ready to ump. Justin Ruggiano can't throw fastballs over the plate against this guy. He's victimized the Nats with a couple of home runs this year. That ball was outside. Then Wilder goes with a breaking ball. The umpire takes a long look at it, 2 0, and Deadwilder steering in. I mean, this isn't a time to be macho if you're a home plate umpire. This is pennant race baseball. And a bouncer to Zimmerman. Ryan will go the short way. On to Danny Espinoza. A very troublesome top of the first. And the Marlins flexing their muscles. They are fourth in the league in runs. They are second in home runs. And Bryce Harper is in the middle of this explosion lately. Seven for his last 18. Last 20 games doing lots of damage. So see your authorized Dodge dealer. Experience a world of performance, design, and fuel efficiency. Schedule a test drive or go to Dodge.com and check out the powerful lineup. Mark Burley, four starts against our franchise. And two of them go way, way back to 2002 and 2004 against the Expos. Strike one to Jason Worth and the crowd doesn't like it. Neither did Jason Worth. You take a little walk, a little stroll outside of the box. Regroup. He's getting stared down by the umpire. Okay. All right. By the way, I've got Ross Deadwater for 25 pitches in the first inning, all of them strikes. <laughs> but he got credit for 13. And we say that tongue in cheek. It wasn't that bad, but it was pretty bad. Two balls and one strike to Worth. Jason with an on base percentage of 398. Foul tipping that one, and the count's even 2 2. So Mark Burley. 
Just a real Iron Man on the mound. 174 innings on the year. 174 hits. Not a strikeout guy. Pitches to contact. And he's coming off a 5 to 1 loss September 2nd at Marlins Park against the Mets. Allowed five runs on six hits over seven innings. Struck out three, walked one. And Worth will hook this ball left field line, and it is caught by Justin Ruggiano. Man, that thing really hung up. At first, it looked like it might die and get near the chalk line. One out on a good running catch. This is a check out the repertoire for Martin Burley. And he's got a lot of different pitches. Fastball, slider, cutter, curveball change. Works fast. Likes to work away to righties early, in late. And has to keep everything down to be successful. To find out why employees choose STG, visit stginc.com. Bryce Harper 0 for 5 against Burley. And that breaking ball drops in 72 miles an hour. 393rd career start. Burley has 173 career victories. Every year with the White Sox until now, and he's pitched at least 200 innings every year since 2001, his first full year in the big leagues. Little chopper third base way. Donnie Murphy plays it well. Two outs. Had to get rid of that in a hurry. Let's set the defense for the Marlins today behind Mark Burley. Ruggiano Hernandez standing in the outfield. Reyes Murphy on the left side. Solano Lee on the right side. John Buck doing the catching. Mark Burley had two years with Chicago, 0405, and he faces Ryan Zimmerman here. When you combine those two years, and he pitched over 480 innings. Fastball up and away to Ryan, who's on a 12-game hitting streak, 17 for 53, with three home runs and 11 RBIs in those 12 games. <laughs> 28 complete games, eight career shutouts for Burley in his 13th year. Four All-Star games, three gold gloves. Handles things on the mound very well in more ways than one. Zimmerman takes that one inside, ball three. I've noticed a few times that Ryan Zimmerman has faced Mark Burley. He's the one guy that really tries to slow him down. Very deliberate between pitches. Hitting on his terms. Two out walk. Burley doesn't do that a whole lot. That's only his 36th walk in nearly 175 innings. Well, hopefully Michael Morris driving that ball over the scoreboard last night will get his extra base hit thing going. It's not like he's not hitting 14 for 41 over his last 10 games. But with that hand bugging him lately, Michael's not been hitting for much power. That was a good sign last night. And I think if you're facing a guy like Mark Burley, you talk about his pitches, they range from... 85 miles an hour to 78 so all pretty much the same speed so what do you do as a hitter you just look for something up in the zone your eyes light up go to hack and maybe pick a side of the plate that was a real defensive swing and a ball in on his hands Nats are gone in the first one runner stranded Marlins powering their way to an early lead
for the second. Let's check out those pitches in the first inning from Ross Detwell. A 3 2 pitch to 2 2 pitch to Hernandez. This makes it 3 2. Perfectly planted fastball in the inner half. Didn't get the call. So here's the 3 2 fastball. Detweiler knows he has to get more plate because he didn't get a call in the fastball in. And this is a big one. This would have made the count 2 2. But now it's 3 1 on that missed call. It's a lot easier hitting 3 1 against a guy who throws fastballs 85% of the time than it is 2 2 because in that 2 2 count, you might have a little bit of off speed in the back of your head. Stanton, all systems go 3 1, hits his 32nd. So one could have been an out if he got the call. The other one would have been a two strike count with a guy battling. Big difference for a hitter. Yep. Well, and if he gets that first one, John Carlos Stanton maybe doesn't even bat in the first inning. So a couple of calls, a two run difference, not just one. John Buck, two for five against Deadweiler, hitting 201. And he's a guy with great power. Out of play to the right side. Buck, Donnie Murphy, and Mark Burley in the top of the second. And all that said, you, you know, that's passed. That's over with. And as a player, you have to control what you can control now and just go from there. Can't let a couple of calls affect the rest of your outing. I'm sure Ross Detweiler won't. Hey, he took a little bit off. Buck was surprised by that. Obviously geared up for the heater, got the hook. First strikeout for Ross. And that's something that Ross might have to incorporate a little more today than he has in the past. You know, a couple of change-ups, a curveball here and there, sprinkle in some more off-speed against a team that's shown the Nationals all season long. They are good at hitting number one. Get to your local Nissan dealer special offers at Nissan Innovation that excites. Visit ChooseNissan.com. Donnie Murphy's a 204 hitter. He's 0 for 5 career against Deadweiler. Target inner half. He paints, but it's a little bit high, 2 and 0. Then he gets a tailing fastball to the outside corner. He shot of getting Gio up to the booth for a few innings. <laughs> He's got nothing to do the rest of the day. Gio elevator level <laughs> five. We know you're watching. Yeah. Get up here. He might get himself in more trouble if he comes and joins us. Yeah, he would. On a pitch away, Donnie Murphy hits it into the right field corner. The Marlins have three extra base hits already, and they're four for eight to start this game. I mean, you've got to give the other side some credit, too. They're the ones taking these hacks, and they've done it against the Nats a lot. And that's the two seam fastball away from Deadweiler, been so effective all season long. We haven't seen too many right handed hitters be able to put that ball in play fair. Usually that's a foul ball down the right field line. Murphy keeps it fair for a double. Mark Burley will swing away. He has three career RBIs and a home run that he hit many, many years ago. He's three for 59 this year, an 075 career batter. And 0 2 in a hurry here. Atlanta, by the way, at the Mets is a 4 5 game today. Chris Medlin, Jeremy Hefner going in that one. Last night, the Braves won their third in a row, and they're only six and a half back of the Nats now. Still a nice, healthy lead. Deadweiler looks back the runner, takes care of that. Two outs. Just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one to look forward to Miller time later in the game. Brought to you by Miller Light. Mark Burley took his bat all the way to first base right there. No bat boy needed on that comebacker to Ross Detweiler. Here's Gorkas Hernandez. <laughs> and his teammates are getting a kick out of it. I think there should be a little hash mark. About 15 to 20 feet up the line. You got to drop your bat by the time you get that hash mark, or else it's a double play. <laughs> I think you should be able to carry it around to every base you want. <laughs> like hit a triple, take your bat with you. Like, gonna... like Pedro Serrano in Major yeah. League. Yeah. Didn't he carry the bat with him all the way around when he hit a homer? Break up a double play with a bat, take out somebody's knees. Oh, great. Yeah. Oh, great. 
Well, maybe in a couple hundred years, as our civilization becomes less civilized, that'll be a new rule in Major League Baseball. I hope I'm not around to see uh, such a thing. A couple hundred years, maybe a lot less than that. Guys will be texting signs to each other with their cell phones. <laughs> All they'll have to do is think it, and the other guy will know. Ball three to Gorkas Hernandez. What will a quality start be, by the way, 100 years from now? That's what I'm wondering. Four pitches. So Solano on deck hit the ball hard. Hernandez hit it out of the park first time. Four pitch walk. Last night in the first two innings, the Marlins got 11 men to the plate, and they're going to do it at least that many again here today. Well, somebody gets themselves picked off. Got to be a very difficult day for Steven Strasburg. We understand it was emotional when he received the news of his shutdown. Davey Johnson said before the game, can you imagine the zoo in New York if he was to start on Wednesday? Even more difficult to deal with than what's already been dealt with by Stephen, Davey, Mike Rizzo, and this ball club. And what a season, though. 15 and 6, 197 strikeouts, just 48 walks, a 3.16 ERA. I think that's something to build on. Yeah, it's not a bad first full year in the big yeah, leagues. That's okay. 28 games started. There it is. Career numbers 21 and 10, 294. Fantastic year for Steven Strasburg, and thanks for all the thrills. Yes, sir. I hope if the Nats make the playoffs, he throws out the first pitch at the first game. I'm going to float that idea right now. All right. On a 1 1 pitch, Solano hits it hard. Murphy around third. He will score. And the Marlins are slamming today. They are 5 out of 10 with a walk to start this game and lead 3 0. I'm going to check out the pitch off speed. Nice piece of hitting by Solano. He's had some good at bats the last two nights. How is this team 12th in the league in batting average and third from the bottom in runs scored with only the Cubs and the Astros under them? And Solano three good at bats last night two hits lined out to left today lined out to center hard first time up and a single a second time for an RBI. That's a four game hitting streak for him seven for 15. Now you've got to deal with Jose Reyes who was robbed of a hit by Zimmerman first time. No balls and two strikes. Reyes doesn't strike out much at all. 48 times all year in 553 at bats. It's another thing that makes him the player he is. The ability to put the bat on the ball and get it in play, use the great speed that he's been blessed with. See, but I, I, sometimes I think that stat's highly overrated. Everybody used to say that about Vladimir Guerrero. He never strikes out. Well, he never had a two strike count all year because he's <laughs> going up hacking at the first pitch every time. And Reyes is a very aggressive hitter as well. Maybe not like Guerrero, but you're not going to strike out if you put the ball in play early in the count consistently. Yeah. And there's a lot of aggressive hitters who have way over 100 strikeouts, but these guys know how to put it in play. And Reyes is having trouble with his hand after that previous swing. Yeah. Man, he really hurt himself there. He's got that band around the base of his thumb. So where do you think the Nats want to put a fastball here? In. Yes sir. Maybe up if your top hands hurting tough to get on top of it.
Reyes gets a piece of it out to right center. Worth as Harper peels off, makes the grab. And the Marlins will score another one. And they've left three runners, 3-0. Three inning here and the Marlins lead three to nothing and whether it was the media attention or the idea of just simply letting his team down Steven Strasburg has had this weighing on him um, but regardless he's had a great year with this still looming over him the team has stayed strong and says that they will be just fine throughout the season without him even though he will be there fighting right there with them and uh, general manager Mike Rizzo had more to say about it today I don't think it became a distraction whatsoever. This is, this team is is battle tested. They're uh, they're a, a terrific major league ball club with great makeup and uh, and guys that uh, that know how to prepare for games and uh, and you could tell by the by the uh, the uh, the product on the field that this this had no lingering effect whatsoever. And it was emotional for Steven Strasburg to hear it. Obviously, he's he's a competitor. He wants to be right there with his team. To the end, Davey Johnson said today, though, that we wouldn't have done anything differently. Uh, no other scenarios fit. And uh, John Lannon will jump into Steven Strasburg's spot on Wednesday against the Mets. That'll be at City Field. Visit FCA.org. The Association for IT Bros, they bring us our sideline report. Our team was so distracted that they pounded out 15 home runs in a four-game sweep of the Cubs. But I think when you talk about Steven Strasburg personally having some pennant race experience of my own to where you know you're worried about the game and sometimes you lose some sleep. I can't imagine what he went through. That dot ball deflecting off Burley to the third baseman Donnie Murphy on a 1-5-3 to rob Adam LaRoche of a hit. Desmond Espinosa coming up in the second inning presented by Luna. Call today for the Luna Double. Get your second room of flooring free at 877-241-LUNA. Ian Desmond. Three hits last night. So he's hit safely nine of his last ten games. Eight of them are multi-hit games. And over that time, he's batting 415. Burley with a fastball to the outside corner. So he's retired four of his first five batters. Only the Zimmerman walk a blemish on his day so far. And a breaking ball that Desmond fouls straight back. So there he is with that 415. 17 hits and 41 at bats. Sharply to short. Jose Reyes. Four ground ball outs for Burley now. After Worth lined out to left to start the game. Some pitchers 
throttle hitters backwards and forwards. And what do I mean by that? There's a big split between their fastball, their changeup, and their curveball in miles per hour. They'll get you out in front. But with Mark Burley, you know, everything within six or seven miles of each other, miles an hour of each other, so he just moves the ball in and out, moves it around, relies on the movement of his pitches and changes it up. But there's not a whole lot to an at bat against him other than you got to get a ball up and look for something to drive. Three ground ball outs in that inning. Five of his first six via the grounder. And look out, Stanton about to lead off. They're 48 pitches, 28 strikes. Stanton, Lee, and Ruggiano do up top of the third. Let's go inside the numbers from STG. And a new era of starting here. Nobody lower than 19th in the league in earn run average. And Gio is up there, the highest at six, with Jordan Zimmerman right behind him. That is impressive. So you get these guys four runs, it's almost a guaranteed W. And in some cases, three. John Carlos Stanton now has two home runs and a double in this series. He just tied Jay Bruce and homers with 32 his first time up today. Ryan Braun of the Brewers has 38. And this, you're looking at a legit 50 home run guy in the future if he can stay healthy for a full season. Lashes that ball to third. Zimmerman on the turnaround. Ryan's second sparkling play of the day. And nice play going to his left right here. Hard hit ball once again off the bat of John Carlos Stanton. Little spin move. Get rid of it quick. Right on the money. Nice play. Carlos Lee next. They've loaded up their lineup with right handed hitting today. And Ross will take 89, put it right on the corner. Took a little bit off. And when Detweiler's locked in, he'll shave off that outside corner of the plate with that two seam fastball to right handers early in the count and come in late like that. With the four seam fastball, a little cut to it sometimes to lock you up. Justin Ruggiano bounced out to Zimmerman first time to win the first inning. Carlos Lee base hit up the middle his first time. His first career hit against Detweiler in seven at bats. That's a nice high hop to Zimmerman. On the run, bad throw. LaRoche grabs it. He got a nice long hop. Two outs, bases empty. Dirks Bentley. It is two weeks. Count them two weeks from today. He'll be right here on this field 
After the Nats take on the Brewers, tickets start at ten dollars. Some restrictions apply. And go to nationals.com slash concerts to check it out. Justin Ruggiano bounced out to third first time up. And Ross Deadwater looking for his first one, two, three inning. Good looking fastball, just missed. This is the only game in baseball until 4 o'clock today. That ball's well hit to right. Worth will back up and watch it. Stays in the yard off the big curly W out there. And it's a two out double for Justin Ruggiano. Four extra base hits by the Marlins. Well, we've seen this the whole homestand. Get the ball in the air and you got a chance in this ballpark playing as small as I've ever seen it play. This ball hit by Justin Ruggiano and you're thinking just stay in the park. Had the sound. Had the trajectory but that big wall in right field keeps it in. 15 feet high out there. Good play by Worth on one hop. Good throw but Ruggiano can run hustling all the way with a two out double. John Buck the hitter. Struck out looking on a breaking ball first time and. He's ahead this time. Might have been a busted bad Zimmerman on the run again and LaRoche will grab that one. Ryan gets three assists in the inning. It'll be Flores, Detweiler, and Worth straight ahead in the third. Brought to you by Joe Lula Hot Sauce, the flavorful hot sauce with the iconic wooden cap, and by Mercedes Benz, located on the web at MBUSA.com. It's a gorgeous day in Washington for now. There's a big line of weather about 50, 60 miles to the west of us, running right along the Blue Ridge Parkway, but nothing going on right now. It is fine here. How about five dollar beer and peanuts Wednesday when the Nats come home a week from Wednesday against the Dodgers. That'll be September 19th. Buy a beer and peanuts for only five dollars at select concession stands. Nationals.com slash tickets for all your ticket information. Some restrictions apply and that's while supplies of peanuts and beer last. You my friend are doing that game by yourself. <laughs> you can't drink during a telecast. Five dollar beers. I think we just got a lot of beers perked up in St. Louis and Milwaukee with that promotion. The brewery capitals of Major League Baseball. That one is a little bit outside and Burley went 0 2 on Jesus Flores, who was switched into the lineup about a half hour before the game today. Kurt Suzuki, 28 career at bats against Burley with 11 hits. Davey Johnson put in Flores, who's 2 for 2 against him. 
with an RBI. Well, when we got to the park today, and I saw Kurt Suzuki going day game after a night game and a night game that went extra innings. I thought to myself, how in the world is he going to do that today? That was a long game last night, and very rarely do you see a catcher do that. And Flores down the line and left. It might leave. It is gone. Hooking it near the pole. And Jesus with his sixth of the year. That last minute lineup change worked pretty good for the Nats. Kurt Suzuki's been swinging a hot bat, but Jesus Flores gets a chance. Last minute change to the lineup. First half back goes deep and there goes a the no hitter. And the shutout right with it. The Nats are on the board. And that wakes up this nice crowd today. 3 1 ball game, bottom of the third. And the Nats have hit 162 home runs, two short of tying their team record. And we talked about how the ball's carrying today. It's carried the whole series, but this one was hit. Looked like a line drive double, and you're wondering, was it going to stay up enough to get out of this park? There's your answer. Ross Deadwather, two for 37 this year, and the breaking ball is taken outside. Jesus with RBI number 26, and he's now three for three career against Burley, who goes two and one on Detweiler. Well, you never know when one swing from the bottom of the order can change an afternoon. Pretty good hack by the right handed hitting pitcher. Jason Worth, top of the order next. He hit the ball pretty well first time. Lined out to left. Strikeout number one for Mark Burley. One out here in the third. Well, this home run tear of the Nats continues. They hit 164 home runs back in 06, their second year in D.C., and that was at spacious RFK Stadium. Alfonso Soriano had 46 of those and they're about to obliterate that mark maybe by the time they leave town for New York on the train tomorrow evening. Jason Worth with that out in the first inning, three for nine career against Burley. Who's now given up 22 home runs this year. I bet you at least 80% of them are solos. Most home runs allowed in the league, 27 by Ian Kennedy of Arizona and Joe Blanton now with the Angels. Pardon me, with the Dodgers, LA Dodgers. And two and two. Way outside. A lot of times in a 3 2 count, nobody on with a two run lead. You're guaranteed a fastball, not with Mark Burley. And he gets one down the middle. 87 to strike out worth looking two K's in a row and I think Jason Worth might have been thinking like I was up here You have to respect the fastball in a 3-2 count, but it looked like the 87 mile an hour fastball at top of the zone Locked Jason worth up pitch track brought to you by kinetic North America from the warfighter in the field to the data in the cloud We protect our country's most critical assets kinetic North America Harper hit a bouncing ball down the third baseline that backed up Donnie Murphy first time. Murphy threw him out by a step. And Burley locks up the left hander with a breaking ball to even things up. Bryce seven for his last 19 starting with the Labor Day game against the Cubs. But he's 0 for 6 career against Mark Burley. He's had trouble with some of these 
veteran left-handers who know how to trick you and take advantage of your aggressiveness. Andy Pettit comes to mind. Got some good left-handers in the other league and this league. Harper's had to deal with as a rookie. That ball is gone if it's fair. It is to the right of the foul pole. Upper deck. And the count goes to three and two. And no argument from Harper. No argument from first base coach Trent Jewett. <laughs> but how hard was that ball hit? And check out the swing from Bryce Harper. 3-1 count. All systems go. Fastball up in the zone. Eyes light up. Just a hair quick. That's about as close as you'll see. Caught it out front. Just a hair. Little hook to it. The last second goes foul. A foot or two away from number 18. 3-2 pitch. He'll pull it on the ground. Carlos Lee. Well, the Nats almost made it a one-run game, but they are on the board thanks to Jesus Flores and his sixth of the year. This one hooked, but he kept it fair, and it's a 3-1 ball game to the middle innings. Again, honor our wounded warriors and the great fighting men and women who help protect our freedoms here at Nationals Park. It's our DynCorp International Troop Recognition. And at DynCorp International, we serve today for a better tomorrow. So Flores has the Nats on the board. Ross Deadweiler trying to keep it 3-1. to one. He's thrown 61 pitches in three innings. He faces Donnie Murphy, Mark Burley, and Gorkis Hernandez, top of the fourth. That's a good fastball, and he gets the call on the inside edge. How about the pop in the eight hole all of a sudden for the Nationals? <laughs> Jesus Flores, back to back starts with home runs. Kurt Suzuki hitting homers, ball all over the place. Pop at the bottom of the order for the Nats is nice. Great change up there. So Ross pulling out the off speed here. You know, and the other thing about the catchers, I know Jesus wants to play every day, but maybe the arrival of Suzuki has given him a little bit of a breather. He's healing up physically. He's been so beat up all year. So maybe a refreshed Jesus Flores is the guy behind the plate now. And when the hitter walks out of the batter's box and out of the circle, no tag required. One out. A couple of back-to-back -back change ups from Detweiler. Good ones. Pulled the string twice. Murphy thinking fastball got the change. And I'm going to guess you're going to see some more of that pitch from Ross Detweiler the, the rest of this afternoon. Yeah, you can do a couple of things to keep teams from swinging comfortably, but one of them can get you thrown out. So the best way to do it is to change speeds and throw off their timing. Mark Burley, probably for him a professional at bat, one pitch, he gets himself off the field. Two quick outs here in the fourth. Solutions that help you achieve your financial goals. PNC Bank for the achiever in you. 
We've been keeping an eye on Tony Renda a couple of times. 380 over the last two weeks. And for the Auburn Double Days at short season A ball, it's game two of the playoffs at Tri City tonight. And the Double Days will be fighting from behind. Here's Gorkis Hernandez, who's homered and walked. Four pitch walk last time up. Yeah. Second straight inning, Ross has retired the first two men. Well, lots of heaters today from Ross, and that's what we expect. Yeah, feel for that change up. This would be a good count to try it. Guy hit a home run. That's a well placed 93 on the outside corner. And another. Ross Deadwater finally gets that 1 2 3 inning. He's been hunting and he's retired seven of the last eight now. The Nats have big guns coming up and Ross starting to turn his day around. And things would get a little rough today. These are the ones I like, the demolition derby editions. You know, George didn't chop down the cherry tree, but he just chopped down two presidents. Oh, that is a cheese grater right to the grill. Look at that. <laughs> Teddy and Abe, and look at Tom Jefferson oh. returning the favor to the father of our country. That's a three concussion race. I love it. Wow. That's they are stuff. dancing on the grounds at Monticello right now. Bottom of the fourth inning, Zimmerman, Morse, and LaRoche. One ball, one strike. Man, I hope the Cavaliers tackle like their local resident Tom Jefferson just did. Zimmerman a walk first time. He's on a 12-game hitting streak. How about 13? Rifles one to the backhand side of Jose Reyes. And Ryan Zimmerman now is 18 for 54 during his hitting streak. Yeah, that was just too hot to handle for Reyes. Got a little cut fastball maybe at 80 miles an hour. I mean, that's just one step to Reyes's right, and he can't get to it because it was hit so hard. Leadoff man on here in the fourth for the Nats. I'm going to bring in Michael Morse, and looks like the second time around, the Nationals are starting to get some things cooking against Mark Burley here. Michael Morse aggressively. Haven't seen him swing at too many first pitches lately. Well, last night, how about the home run from the Beast? Tie the ball game late. Got a fastball right down the middle, got inside of it, hit it out the other way. A laser beam to right center. That had this crowd in a frenzy. 
Yeah, one of the liveliest nights of the year, thrilling ball game, but the Nats gave up three in the tenth. As the Marlins got Tyler Clippard and won it nine to seven after Washington scored one in the bottom of the tenth. They got their money's worth here last night. Fastball up two and one. As mentioned, the home run always a threat when Burley's pitching. He's given up 22 this year. The Nats are a hot power hitting team right now. Tried to cut that ball in under Michael's hands, and it's three and one. Burley really handcuffed him first time. Michael took a defensive swing. Left hander LaRoche on deck. Yeah, danger lurking. He's already taken Burley deep twice this year. And Michael Morris on the air to right. It'll back up Stanton. It's still going. And he'll catch it right in front of the bullpen. Sending Zimmerman back to first. But I tell you, Epi, every day it's coming a little better for Michael Morris with those hands and the power. A yeah, good hack right there. I think he just got it off the label a little bit too much. Good swing, good aggressive swing in a 3 1 count. Just didn't have the sound to think that that was going to carry out of the yard. You just see a little bit more every day from Michael, though. And they've had this big. Offensive explosion lately without him driving in a lot of those runs. LaRoche was looking first pitch breaking ball and he fouled it back. Adam scorched the ball up the middle. It deflected off Burley to Donnie Murphy, who was playing in more of a shortstop position with nobody on than he is now. 88 down the middle, 0 2. Slots, tables, and dining. The ultimate triple play at Hollywood Casino Charlestown races. The Nats by a big margin over the Rangers, the Orioles, and some other power hitting ball clubs for the most home runs in September. That's 20 in a week. Yeah, but did you see those parks? Yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, those are good hitting teams, don't get me wrong, but they also play in very hitter friendly parks, and we always talk about how fair Nats Park is, so. Obviously playing a little bit smaller than I've seen at this home stand. Target away on one and two. He tried to paint. That was 80. And Mark Burley misses. He doesn't miss by much. Hmm. I would think the off speed would be much higher. Two balls, two strikes. Ian Desmond pulled the ball hard to Reyes on a ground ball first time. Interesting Mark Burley five ground ball outs in the first two innings and then only one since that was on Harper who one pitch before almost hit it out of the county last inning. And that was a slow reaction a late reaction by Zimmerman getting back to the bag. That's why if you're not going anywhere you get close enough to where if you're fooled against the lefty it's all you do is fall down back to the bag. That's exactly what he did. The Roche waiting for that one. Fouls it away. Adam career against Mark Burley two for 13 but he has two RBIs. Actually that's Michael Morse now. LaRoche is six for 14 with two RBIs and the two homers. And that one up and in unreachable for Adam who strikes out. Two down after the Zimmerman base hit. Burley's third K of the day. I'm trying to figure out what this pitch is. Is it left on left changeup or did he go with a little slurve right there at 80? Yeah, it looked like a breaking ball that stayed way up and in, huh? A yeah, slider that didn't slide. Oh, 
Well, you got a pitcher who throws strikes. You have a hitter who loves to swing at the first one. And I figured something liable was liable to happen quickly. And Desmond took a, took a pretty good hack. He's one for four career against Burley. Wow. Got a pitch right there. 88 up in the zone. Eyes lit up. Let it fly. Just missed it. It might be the hardest swing he's taken this year. And that's saying something because he swings hard every single time. <laughs> and check out the swing for me and Desmond. 88 mile an hour fastball up. Where the feet come off the ground pretty much. Just could go out on a limb and say he was thinking tie ball game right there with that swing. Yeah. Target way out. Desmond goes that way, places it perfectly, and a base hit. Zimmerman stops at second. Sounded like he might have busted his bat. And Ian Desmond will roll one through the uncontested right side. That's a smart hitting right there from Ian Desmond. And I'm where they ain't. Off the end, after that big hack to get to two strikes, found it straight back. Right off the end of the bat. Bat broke, died a hero, base hit, two guys on. I mean, you talk about a CNI single, that's the definition right there. Nicely done by Ian Desmond. He'll take a million of those. So he sits safely in 10 of his last 11 games now. Danny Espinosa has a nine game streak on the line. Burley grounded him out to short first time, but Danny hit the ball extremely hard. And that is down the left field line. Zimmerman will score. Going to third and going to second are Desmond and Espinoza as Ruggiano missed the cutoff man. He didn't miss the cutoff man, Carp. There wasn't a cutoff man. And he was trying to throw out a guy at home. He had no chance. Yeah, Donnie Murphy supposed to be the cutoff man right there. Great swing by Espinoza. First pitch ambush. Bullet down the left field line. And this is a big, I guess, 180 foot mistake. By the Marlins, you look at Donnie Murphy, he's standing on third base. He's supposed to be the cutoff man. Ian Desmond heads up, seeing there's no cutoff man. Danny Espinosa, good hustle on the backside. Now instead of first and second two outs, you got second and third two outs. They're going to walk Flores and pitch to Detweiler to load the bases. You know, the only thing I can think of, FP, is maybe Murphy, seeing that Desmond was trying to take third on a hit right in front of him, thought they might have a play there, but... That's not where the throw was. Well, that's a good call by you. I mean, he's thinking there's no play at home. Ruggiano's thinking there is a play at home. Probably calling for the ball to third. Bottom line is, and you talk about this all the time, the value of those two out RBIs, they're just backbreakers to the guys in the field. And the Marlins doing what they have to do here to load the bases, and we we'll see if Ross Detweiler can run into one for his fourth or fifth career RBIs. Hustle good by Espinosa to get to second base. It took the bat out of Jesus Flores' hands. But that's nothing you think about as a runner yeah. when you're watching guys advance. You're not thinking, well, if I get into scoring position here, they're going to walk the guy behind me. You're just saying, hey, guy in front of me is going. I'm going too. Ross Deadweiler on the year, two hits, one RBI. And a little tappered on the third baseline. Just stepping on the bag is Donnie Murphy. So the Nats will settle for one, but they're getting to Burley the second time around.
in the game. The Nats have won the last two innings after losing the first two. Gorkis Hernandez and John Carlos Stanton going deep early. Jesus Flores is homered. And then the Nats back away for another run in the fourth inning. Yeah, 3 2 pitch to Gorkis. And he goes deep to lead this one off. This one on my home run tracker, 796 feet off the bat of John Carlos Stanton to left center field. <laughs> and Jesus Flores. Gets a pitch down, digs it out, and guess what? Both of them count the same. This one just over the wall. So three taters kind of staying with that home run theme. It's been the case this whole homestand. It's interesting now through four innings, Ross Deadwater has thrown three fewer pitches than John, or rather than Mark Burley, against the likes of John Carlos Stanton, who will face in this inning. Tomorrow is a 135 game. Edwin Jackson going for number 10. Ricky Nolasco really put it to the Nats the last time they saw him in Miami. And then it'll be Gio and Colin McHugh Monday night at New York. Jordan Zimmerman, R.A. Dickey on Tuesday. And John Lennon replacing Steven Strasburg Wednesday night against Matt Harvey. The Nats and the Metropolitans. Yeah, John Burley is Mark's younger brother that never made it out of A-ball. So he's thrown 74 pitches. Deadwater 71. And he's had a hard time with Donovan Solano today, who's lined out hard to center, lined to left for an RBI hit. And Donovan is on a four game streak. That may not sound impressive, but he's seven for his last 15. And he's telling the Marlins, I know Emilio Bonifacio is on the DL with that thumb. What about me for next year at second base? Obviously September just such a better look for a, a general manager and a manager at a player than the small snapshot that is spring training. You never yeah. a player gets hot in spring training. It doesn't count on the back of your baseball card. And a lot of times organizations get so caught up on a young guy that does well in spring training. But if you get a good look in the month of September and get the job done now all winter your organization's thinking can this guy play second base every day for us next year yeah or could he platoon with Greg Dobbs at third and the Marlins don't have an everyday third baseman Dobbs will play a lot against right handed pitching and he's a quality hitter well, this guy might be making a bit over there too. three two now and Deadwater walks him that's a pitch not that far out pretty good pitch. Ross Deadweiler, two walks today, one to Hernandez in the second. And Solano here in the fifth. Joe Lula hot sauce on the pitch track. And 91 2 seamer down and away. I don't really care what pitch track I had to say. That's a strike every single time. Bring in the heat and the flavor, Joe Lula. Jose Reyes is 0 for 2. Hot shot to third. Zimmerman robbed him. Fly ball to right. Bunting for a hit. And Ryan charging from third. This is a big inning. The Nats have scored two consecutive frames. They got the top of the order coming up. Bottom five. You can keep the Marlins off the board with Reyes and Stanton, two of the three hitters in this frame. He bunch, and he's got to be out. Yes. That ball hit Reyes well out in front of home plate, and the runner has to return to first base, Solano. And no argument from Jose Reyes. He knew it as soon as it hit him. Give the put out to the nearest fielder. That'll be two unassisted for Jesus Flores. They're trying to push this one to second base, I think. Now, big hop off the dirt, hits him in fair territory. And when that happens, you are out. And of course, running from the right side of the batter's box. Crossing into fair ground before he can get near that line. Stanton to Zimmerman. Two outs. Hey, you'll take an out against that guy any way you can get it. I mean, I was watching, but I didn't see it because it was hit so hard. Can we see that again? <laughs> <laughs> I missed this the first time. Ryan saw it. <laughs> he did. Ready for the baseball. He already got tested last time up from John Carlos Dan. Hard hit ground ball to his left. Made a nice play. That time a line drive right at him. Made another nice play. Two unlikely outs against two good hitters. And now it's Carlos Lee. Yeah. 
man, where is that? Just because the catcher set up on the outside edge, the inside's not available. Flores set up away again. A little bit upstairs, two and zero. Oh. Bo Porter moving Michael Morse into more of a pull position. Boy, it is a good day to hit, I'll tell you that. You could go up there, stand like a statue, and get yourself into a hitting count every single time. I'd love to see all three of these. I'm going to take two pitches, and I'll be 2-0. and oh. There's a good shot today because the strike zone, wow. about the size of a tuna can. First two pitches were perfect. That one did miss a bit. But if it's 0-2, he might be swinging at that. Wow. Jesus Flores letting him know too. Let's check, check out pitch track again. It's got two of the three pitches for a strike. It's got three of the four pitches for a strike, and that was a four pitch walk, folks. That is one of the worst at bats I've seen an umpire have this year. I'm sorry. <laughs> Tell my feel, Carp. Unbelievable. Where do you have to throw the ball? These are major league hitters, they will kill you. Ruggiano one for two with a double. I don't blame Hazers Flores. Take a stroll. Talk to your pitcher. Just when things are turning around for the Nats, something like that happens. This inning could be over. Uh, that was a good trip. Hey, you all right? Yeah, let's go to work right here. Forget about that. Okay. You know, something along those lines. And. We've talked about it all season long. Nobody runs a game like Jesus Flores behind the plate. Luciano probably betting will throw in right down the middle to try to get ahead. Doubled off the high part of the right field wall. Last time up. This guy's strong. At the age of 30, a career just dawning after many years in the minor leagues. And then 84 to get strike two. Half swing. LaRoche misses it. And I think Carlos Lee stood right in front of him to shield him from that ground ball. Marlins get a run on a rare error by Adam LaRoche. But you'll have to see what Carlos Lee did here. I think there was some screening going on here. It was just a funky swing off the bat of Justin Ruggiano. 0 2 pitch away, kind of a check swing. And yeah, he lost sight of that. Good call. There was runner, ball, ball, runner. Didn't see it. Probably got an in between hop. Ball got on him a little quicker than he thought because he lost sight. Russ Deadwater hasn't given up a hit in this inning. John Buck, the hitter, strikeout, ground out to Zimmerman. And a shot to left. Michael Morse can't get that one. Lee scores. Ruggiano coming around, and now it's five to two. Now they've got the runner hung up between first and second. Now a throw home gets him, and that's bad base running by the Marlins. You make a mistake like that when you're ahead, it may cost you later. John Buck in no man's land, and the Nats get him.
Congratulations, John Lannon, his teammates, his pitching coach. He gives up five runs today, three of them earned. And definitely some things going on beyond his control today in five tough innings. Seven hits, three walks, three strikeouts. Craig Stanton throwing. Top of the sixth. Well, here comes the top of the order for the Nats. So now they got to work a little harder to stage a three run comeback instead of just one. And funny, he, he's talking to his pitching coach, Steve McCaddy, about that four pitch walk, I believe, to Carlos Lee saying, I can't believe it. <laughs> I'm throwing the ball right down the middle and he's calling them balls. Hey, Ross, wait till you get up to the clubhouse and see the replays. I hope the commentary is on that for you to hear. So here we go, bottom of the fifth inning. You don't want to sit up here. 120 feet from home plate complaining about stuff like that. But when a pitcher is working hard and is throwing strikes, he's got to be rewarded. And this isn't the first inning anymore. Worth is lined out to left, called out on strikes. 2 and 0. Oh. That's both ways. It's not just one way. The Marlins have just taken advantage of opportunity a little bit better to this point. Burley has walked two, but one was intentional. Worth gets jammed enough to keep that one in the yard. It'll be in the air for Justin Ruggiano. Third time around the batting order now. Harper and Zimmerman the next two. And grounded out to third his first time up. Close play at first. Grounded out to Carlos Lee his last time up. Just missed a home run by a couple of feet foul. This one to right center. See you later. Upper deck. And this one way fair. Number 18 for the rookie. That one stayed fair. RBI number 48. That's his third homer on this homestand. I mean, when he's locked in like this, it is some kind of fun to watch him swing. So much balance throughout the swing. Very quiet lower half, violent upper half, not a whole lot of head movement. And when he hits one, a lot like John Carlos Stanton, they stay hit. Yeah, actually, Harper's fourth homer of the homestand. He had one against St. Louis. Two against Chicago and now one against the Marlins. Watch where this one lands. It's okay. It's still in the air, folks. Don't worry about it. We'll get back to it. <laughs> Zimmerman has walked, singled, and scored. Ryan has a 13-game hitting streak. And Burley now has given up 23 home runs this year. The Nats within one of tying their all time team record of 164. You know, Mark Burley's pretty smart. He, he works fast to keep his defense in it, but he also works fast so that you can't show the home runs over and over again. <laughs> I mean, we can't show far home runs because he's already got the ball in the mound. He's ready to go. Maybe we got to speed him up into fast forward. Watch where this hits. Goodness. <laughs> Zimmerman waits for the breaking ball. Deep short. Pretty good play by Jose Reyes to get Ryan by a step. Two outs. A little slip from Reyes to the backhand side. And I don't know if there's any shortstop in baseball that gets rid of the ball quicker to the backhand side than Jose Reyes. Watch this. Little slip right there. The transfer from the glove to the hand. He got rid of it 
I mean, basically just redirected a backhand to first base. And I've always thought his arm is underrated. Not by me. He's got a cannon when he needs it. Doesn't use it all the time. It's there if he needs it. Here's Morris flight out deep to right last time. And right now quite honestly Ross Detweiler deserves to be off the hook in this game. Given up three earned runs and Ats have scored three. He'll give way to Craig Stammen. 89 pitches, 52 strikes. And that home run. Bryce Harper ties Melot for second most ever by a teenager. Tony Canigliero is the only one left on the list at 24. So that's 18 for Harper. I think he's got six in him in the next three and a half weeks. And Todd Frazier was running away with that rookie of the year thing. I'm not so sure anymore. <laughs> Frazier, by the way, hitting in the high 280s. Harper's in the low 260s right now. Michael Moore's that one by him. So the Nats keep getting one at a time. They've done it three innings in a row. Two via the home run. And this ball is way fair, way high, way gone. And it's five to three into the sixth. W.B. Mason. Who but W.B. Mason. Bryce Harper's now eight for his last 21. Three homers during that time. It is time for our Home Depot doing more on defense. And I feel like we've done this a lot this year. Let's check out Ryan Zimmerman at third base. Jose Reyes up. Backhand side. Get to your feet quick. Good help by LaRoche on the backside. Good athletic play by the corners. And how about this one? You want to play third against John Carlos Stanton? Go ahead. On your toes, line drive. A couple of nice plays by Ryan Zimmerman. Bottom of the order for the Marlins in the top of the six. So Stammen will now be taking on this primarily right handed hitting lineup. Donnie Murphy has doubled and struck out. Ninety two with sink. That's a swing, says Tony Randazzo. Down a first base for strike two. A two seam fastball, low nineties from Stammen. With a curveball and a slider, this is a slider at eighty five, the disappearing one. 
goes more down than across. It's been his out pitch all year. Right under the bat of the right handed batter. Ryan Matthews like with that one. And the first out here in the top of the sixth. Thirty seven dollars for every strikeout by a Nationals pitcher this year. And that's to the Children's Inn at the National Institutes of Health where children receive great medical treatment. Their families at their sites. Thank you. Washington area Toyota dealers. Four strikeouts by the Nats staff today and that's a strike to Mark Burley who's bounced back to the pitcher twice. Stamina will let it go because he knows Danny Espinosa's back there. Marlins box score lots of early offense. Three hits first inning homers by Gorgas Hernandez and John Carlos Stanton. And then some horrible luck for Ross Deadweiler in the fifth inning. Gave up two runs on one single. A bunch of missed pitches. Two walks and an error in that inning. Top of the order now, Gorkas Hernandez, one for two with a homer and a walk. Well, Stanton can have a one, two, three inning after the Bryce Harper home run. You just feel like momentum's wearing red all of a sudden. Pace of the game has picked up even more. And Stammon coming in out of the bullpen, firing strikes. Stammon over 79 innings now, number two among relievers in that department. He's just had a fantastic year here at the age of 28. Seven relief appearances at the end of last year with an 0.87 ERA showed the Nats they could consider him for the bullpen. Long middle setup guy, and he is not disappointed. Two and two on that foul ball. That's why Stam has been so successful all season long. Great run on that 91 92 mile an hour fastball into right handers. Tough to keep fair if he puts it where he wants. And right when you think he's going to double up in there, he drops a slider on the other side to get you. Bright, sunshiny, muggy, breezy Saturday afternoon. Still nervously checking that radar, but that weather staying out to the west and to the northwest of us for the moment. Right up the mountain line from West Virginia all the way up into the Harrisburg area, not threatening us at the moment. That's a strike right there by Stan. Did you see that? Does it count? Yeah. I bet you pitch track at it as a strike. That would be our slow Lula pitch track. <laughs> <laughs> well played. Two balls, two strikes. A drive. Desmond to his left. Great reaction by Ian Desmond. And here come the Nats. LaRoche, Desmond, and Espinosa coming up. And uh, I think you folks can feel it. Despite all the adversity today, Washington still very much in this game and refusing to let go of some momentum.
have five, six, seven due up. Here in the six, discover Kia's full lineup of high quality, stylish, and dependable vehicles. To learn more, visit Kia.com. Look at this season series. It's ridiculously close. The runs, the hits, the extra base hits, that's including today's numbers. And LaRoche on the first one will hit a soft ground ball over to Donovan Solano on the shift. Adams 0 for 3. But prior to the start of this game, everything on this board was virtually dead even. Except for this part right there. Yeah. You wouldn't know it the way they get themselves up and play against the Nats. Detweiler squeezed like a Florida orange today. And the Nats are still battling to try to get back into this thing. Desmond one for two with an opposite field hit last time. And that rocket way foul. Ian going for his ninth multi-hit game in his last 11. His batting average in the 293 range. And that was a changeup that just dove down away from the barrel of his bat at the last second. Fighting to stay alive. Danny Espinoza, RBI hit last time up. And he has a 10 game hitting streak. Desmond, <laughs> he's seeing everything Mark Burley has different speeds, different locations here, and still fighting. He has made up his mind that John Buck is not going to catch a ball this at bat. <laughs> I mean, it is kitchen sink and all the tools when this guy gets you 0 2. Breaking ball gets away. And there will be a tag. Strikeout number five for Mark Burley. <laughs> Nowhere to go for Ian Desmond. You can go for postseason ticket purchase priority for the playoffs this year if the Nats make it by placing a deposit on a full season ticket plan for 2013. Go to nationals.com slash 2013. Call the ticket number 202 675 Nats. That offer expires next Saturday, April 15th. Danny Espinosa, one for two with his 52nd RBI today. Wow. Mark Burley, by the way, FP coming into this inning, 92 pitches. So he's at 100 right now. First pitch curveball for a strike, then throws one a little bit shorter to get the swing through strike two. He's thrown as many as 116 pitches in a start this year. He went 95 his last time when, as FP told you, the Mets roughed him up. 111 the time before that at Dodger Stadium in five and two thirds. Espinosa reaching out. Good glove play, Donovan Solano. The kid brother of Nationals farmhand Jonathan Solano putting on a nice show. Defense and with the bat this weekend. This one to the seventh inning.
days it's been diving Desmond at shortstop last night John Carlos Stanton gets jammed and Desmond showing off the range Ryan Zimmerman just looking over his shoulder at a great dive and play gave him a 10 on the landing Zach Duke liked it and how about today a bullet to his left and he dives that way just a reaction play step in a dive so last couple of days Ian Desmond spent a lot of time on the ground but his pitchers appreciating it pretty obviously the oblique and the hamstring feeling just fine these days. That's why you don't come back from those injuries until you're ready. That's a great breaking ball from Stammen to Donovan Solano who leads off after that outstanding play he made. He has single driven in a run walked and scored today. That ball just foul. Tough play down there in the corner. Solano a couple nifty plays at second. Jose Reyes same thing at short. Donnie Murphy made a nice play at third. You got a guy like Mark Burley on the mound getting it and throwing it. Defense on their toes. You're going to see plays like that more often than not. Goes with a breaking ball and hung it a bit on 0 2 and Solano's done it again. Harper will cut it off. And Craig Stammen would like to have that 0 2 pitch back. Third time on base for Solano today. And in this series, he's been on five times. Man, this guy's some kind of little player. I'll tell you what, tough out. And it takes a little out of his swing. He's beat him to the pole side, going the other way. This time a leadoff double in the seventh, and the beat goes on for Donovan Solano against the Nats. Hmm. He's flirting with 300 now. Now it gets a little more tough with Reyes and Stanton, followed by Carlos Lee and Jose Reyes bats left handed for the first time. It's a big run for the Marlins if he can move that runner or drive him in. With that in mind, Stammen keeping the ball down and away. Solano, by the way, with that hit now batting 297. Driven to center. It'll back up Harper. Trying to set his feet for a throw here. Solano heading for third. Bryce not able to make it very close, but probably as close as anybody can. And Reyes does the job. Runner at third, one out with John Carlos Stanton coming in. He's hit the ball hard three times. So consecutive 30 homer seasons before the age of 23. Jimmy Fox, Eddie Matthews, Albert Pujols, and Miguel Cabrera. And Bryce Harper will certainly be in that category sometime soon. 30 home run season with knee surgery in the middle. How about that? Is that any good? I mean, we talked about this last night. You've got four very uncomfortable infielders right now having to play in on this man. We've seen Ryan Matthews have some success against Stanton in these situations by going with that two seamer in. And you saw the first pitch from Stammen, same thing, sinker down and in, fish ain't biting. Target in. Trying to handcuff him into a little ground ball, but he misses 2 and 0. Oh. And if you walk him, it's not the end of the world. Although Lee's not a double play type hitter he's a fly ball guy I just want to make quality pitches here and hope somehow you get him out or he gets himself out that's a great breaking ball and two account Stanton think I'm getting another two seamer I'm going to leave early start my swing try to keep it fair it's a slider on the outer half to a pull swing perfect pitch on the Nissan pitch track And then another in a similar spot. And the count's 2 2. Watch the front shoulder of John Carlos Stanton on this pitch. 
He's thinking fastball in. It's all it takes is that little leak right there, and that's it. Made him aware of the fastball in the inner half. The little flinch got him with the slider away. Now maybe you think about bouncing and hope that your catcher, Jesus Flores, can keep it in front. That's a pretty good pitch. Just missing three and two. Target is away. He goes slider again. Strikes him out for the second out here in the seventh. That whole sequence was masterful between Jesus Flores and Craig Stamina gets one of the premier power hitters in the game. Make him aware of that fastball in or at least show him a couple of 91s with sink and then drop a bunch of sliders on the outer half. And I think Stanton was convinced he was getting a 3-2 fastball. Stamets said not so fast through the slider and got him. Yeah, never did see a heater after the count went to 2-0. and oh. Here's Carlos Lee. This is no picnic. Base it up the middle first time. He's walked and scored. It's one thing to have a game plan against a guy with 32 home runs. It's another thing to be fearless enough to execute it. That was perfect. Right hander Ryan Webb warming for the Marlins. Mark Burley's at 102 pitches through six. Nats have eight, nine, and one due up after the stretch. Right now, Craig probably feels like he can put that slider anywhere he wants to. It's just a veteran hitter not biting on it right there. You might have to try a two seam fastball down and in here. Maybe even off the plate in a 2 1 count and hope he's aggressive. And they're going back in there. There it is. Yep. Way off the plate. 3 and 1. Justin Ruggiano next. 1 for 2 with a double. Donovan Solano doubled to lead off this inning. He's still there with two outs. Three and two. It looked like Carlos Lee was taken all the way. Like, okay, you got a base, you're going to walk me. He took a 3 1 fastball right down the middle from Craig Stammen. Might be a case of a hitter out thinking himself. Been there, done that. That's her down by two. An important out to get here in the seventh inning. Oh, he's telling everybody he's sitting on that slider. He's not going to get a call today on that part of the plate. First and third, two outs. Now dealing with Ruggiano. And this guy's an aggressive hitter early in the count. Top seven. It's been a struggle right from the first batter of the game for the Nats today. Trying to keep this Marlins offense at bay. Trying to stage the come from behind.
High chopper Zimmerman. The catch, the release, and LaRoche can't pick it. The Marlins score again. And their last three runs will be unearned unless they call that a hit. Carlos Lee ends up all the way over at third base. Ruggiano puts the ball in play. Ryan Zimmerman with another throwing error. This will be his 14th error of the year. The chopper off the plate. LaRoche trying to pick him up on the backside. Can't do it. Craig Stammen trying to pitch around a leadoff double. Almost got out of the jam. Marlins last three runs on errors. Here's John Buck. Michael Gonzalez for the Nats. They'll be hitting for Stammen in the bottom of the seventh. Nats have been in the top two, the top three, the top four in the league in defense the entire season, but two costly errors here today. Runner goes off the first, throw through, and out at second base. Jesus Flores guns out. Justin Ruggiano for the Marlins score again and lead by three. Some of the moments and thrills Steven Strasburg gave us this year officially announced before the game that he has been shut down. That is the first base runner that has been caught versus Craig Stammen this year. Wow. The league was 12 for 12 before that caught stealing. Christian Garcia for the Nats now. They had Michael Gonzalez up there. And this one goes to the bottom of the seventh inning. Flores followed by, it appears, Steve Lombardozzi. Jesus today with a home run. He's been walked intentionally to load the bases back in the fourth inning.
Had him reaching. Burley. <laughs> Kind of looked like a goaltender right there. He was ready to make the kick save if necessary. He told you in the American League he's won three gold gloves in his career. And Jesus Flores with a good throw to end the top of the seventh inning. Ruggiano trying to steal. And we've seen people run at will against Craig Stammen this year. This is the first time in 13 tries that the Nats have been successful throwing something, someone out with Craig Stammen on the mound. Good throw. Lombardozzi has a pinch hitter this year, seven for 19. And from the right side, he's three for six. A little pop fly left side. Jose Reyes calling Murphy off the ball. Now the Nats trying to get some things restarted offensively here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Box score today shows hits in just three innings. The third with the Flores homer. The fourth when they had three hits settled for one run. And then the Harper home run fifth inning. Jason Worth is 0 for 3. He has lined out to left, struck out looking, and uh, hit a fly ball to left back in the fifth. Well, Mark Burley's a guy who will go seven on you many times. And Bryce Harper seeing Mark Burley well all day long. Jason Worth can find a way to battle here with two strikes and get on with two outs. Never know. Worth a fly to center. Right there is Gorky Hernandez. And this will be the 14th time this year Mark Burley has pitched at least seven innings in a game. He's in control right now. Earlier in the game, it's Miller time brought to you by Miller Lights. We're going to go all the way back to the first inning. John Carlos Stanton, a guy with 31 home runs, takes a close pitch, would have made it a 2 2 count. Now he's sitting 3 1, looking for a fastball, got it up and got it out for his 32nd home run of the year. That was a far one. And he doesn't hit many wall scrapers, and we're going to make that our Miller Light play of the game. That gave them a two run lead. Nats have been able to get back to within one now down by three eighth inning coming up and another appearance for Christian Garcia. 
who did some great closing with that 056 Ihare at Syracuse. And now his first couple of major league appearances have been quite good. Now three pitch guy, fastball, curveball change. Fastball in the upper 90s, 96 to 98. And there's the curveball at 80 miles an hour. He's got a change up in the high 80s to go with that high 90s fastball. So an inning and two thirds at the big league level so far. One hit, one strikeout. Hmm. Well, why not him? John Buck figuring 2 0 fastball fouled it. Got another one and foul tipped at 96. That didn't look like a straight 96 either. A little tail to that. Challenge fastball by him. Good pitch. Right by him. 86 took a little bit off. And that thing had some late dive to it. And Christian Garcia. Impressing us and the brass so far. Maybe impressing John Buck too. He saw a couple of nasty curveballs to start the at bat, two mid 90s fastballs, and then he ends it with an 86 mile an hour changeup down and away. John Buck saw all three pitches, and they were pretty good from Garcia. So Donnie Murphy two strikeouts a double. Brian Peterson will hit for Mark Burley next. Pretty typical outing for Burley. Three hits or rather three runs five hits. A couple of walks one of them intentional five strikeouts. He'll give up homers but there's seldom anybody on base when he does that. And the right hander A.J. Ramos warming for the Marlins and that's touched him for the Michael Morse. Home run last night and Garcia overmatches that right handed batter two outs. And I would imagine with every appearance confidence growing from Christian Garcia. And he keeps throwing stuff like this. He's going to see some big innings for this ball club and some big games. Now look at him turn that over right there. And that is dirty. Look at the downward action. Another good pitch from Garcia for the punch. Yeah. Brian Peterson has a pinch hitter this year, one for eight. Let off in the ball game last night, walked a couple of times, then he went one for four, including the blue hit in the tenth inning that got their game-winning rally started. This is easy for Bryce Harper, and a great inning for Christian Garcia. First three appearances at the big league level, very good.
Arlington and Mercedes-Benz of Alexandria. Early power for the Marlins, Flores and Harper, though, providing mid-game power for the Nats, who are still trying to make up that early deficit. Let's check out that Bryce Blast, the Harper homer, fifth inning. Just missed one his first time up. Hook foul to last second. Next time up, bam. I guess I should say bam, bam. Upper deck about five rows deep where the big boys go. A little I love you sign to mom and dad. And Bryce Harper seeing the ball big all homestand. Last road trip too, locked in. It'll be Harper, Zimmerman, and Morse as the Nats get into the Marlins bullpen here. This call to the pen packaged by the UPS store. We love logistics and it's A.J. Ramos who in the eighth inning last night grounded out Adam LaRoche. Michael Morse homered off him. Desmond had a base hit. So he'll see Morse in this inning as the third man up. And he's not afraid to throw the fastball. Guy coming out of the bullpen got a pretty big heater. Challenge you with it. He's also got a slider and a cutter to go with it, but pretty much fastball slider. Fastball average in the mid-90s. Fourth year pro, 26 years of age. Harper one for three with that home run, that monster blast last time. He went up hacking. Let's go inside the numbers with Kia. They have a full lineup of high-quality, stylish, and dependable vehicles. Go to Kia.com to learn more. And Harper one away from Mel Ott. And then approaching Tony Conigliero. Way inside. That got him. Nats will take that base runner. Well, that's one man aboard. They need another. He's trying to get that tying run into the batter's box. Along the line here in the eighth or ninth inning. Yeah, need base runners any way you can. Ryan Zimmerman has walked, singled, and scored today. Robbed of a hit another time on a good play by Jose Reyes. So Ryan's locked in, trying to get his batting average up to 290. They shade Zimmerman up the middle. A lot of hitting room, about 80 feet of it on the right side. Up and in, 2-0, and, oh, and John Buck is going to make a visit, and so is... This is not Randy St. Clair. This is the manager... And there may be a riot act about to be read. Oh, he's either done with him or this is going to be a pump me up speech, but he's looking out to his bullpen right now. Is this a pep talk or a pitching change? That was, uh, you okay right now? You all right? It's the big leagues. We have a three run lead, probably part of that. I mean, the stuff is there, but you saw him hit Harper with the slider. First two pitches to Zimmerman, nowhere near. That's a good trip by Isaac Gillian. Settle down his young right-hander with a big arm. See if it works. This is a big pitch for the Marlins right here and the Nats. 2-0. and oh, Tying run on deck. And Zimmerman cranks one to left center. Heading for the bullpen. It is a one run game. It worked, but it worked for the Nats. Well, if Ozzy wanted him to throw a strike, he did. And Ryan Zimmerman was ready. That's his 20th of the year. His RBI total is up to 80. It's the fifth time in Ryan's career he's gone 20 or more. Just smart hitting by Ryan Zimmerman. You're thinking, ah, he's going to take right here, try to get the tie and run to the plate. And I guess in the situation, you could call this an ambush. We're almost nowhere near with his fastball so far. Hit Bryce Harper with the slider. But Ryan Zimmerman ready to hit, do some damage, catches a mid-90s heater out front. And just like that, we got ourselves a one-run wego.
That ties the Nationals all time single season home run record as a team with 164. Here's Michael Morse who took this pitcher deep last night. So the road back is almost completed. Oh, Morris waiting for a breaking ball that was hanging a bit. And check out the home run last night for the Beast. Got a fastball on the middle third of the play. Got the barrel inside of it. Drove it out the other way. Missile out to right center. That was on a heater. Now he's battling an 0-2 count right here. And Morris had a home run cut on an 0-2 pitch. See that becomes the problem for a young pitcher with a big arm all of a sudden you're a little bit wild you're not throwing strikes and now you try to throw a strike and it's not a quality strike you end up throwing it right down the middle like that last one the two run homer to Zimmerman. Moore serves one to right for a base hit. What a good at bat that is and the time runs on base with nobody out. And A.J. Ramos is done here in the eighth. What a pretty piece of hitting by Michael Morse right there. And Yuri Perez is going to run for Morse. He gets some speed on the bases representing the tie and run. But they talk about staying with an 0-2 slider. Just got a center cut fastball 0-2. Fouled it straight back. And just staying on that slider long enough to get the tie and run aboard. I guess you could say the leadoff man aboard after the two spot from Ryan Zimmerman here in the eighth. So A.J. Ramos does not retire a hitter. LaRoche against a right-hander due up. here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Nats make an all kind of noise. Only fitting that Ryan Zimmerman would tie the team record for home runs in a season with his 20th and number 164 for the Nats. As you would say got the hands inside that one. That was a majestic fly ball over the bullpen. It's another two hundred dollars to the Children's National Medical Center. Every time an ad hits one out of the park this year. That's from our Washington area Lexus dealers. It's a lefty Mike Dunn against lefty Adam LaRoche. Could be a one batter appearance. Dunn pitched in the seventh inning last night, two thirds of an inning. He struck out Bryce Harper, grounded out Ryan Zimmerman. As the Nats had scored three to get back to within a run. So a similar situation, one inning later here today. And you got a guy standing on first base right now with 51 steals on the season in the minor leagues. And a major league left hander looking at him. Mike Dunn.
career against Adam LaRoche. It's 0 for 3, two walks, a strikeout. Crowd of 28,860 into this one now. That's a fastball that runs to the inside edge. One ball, one strike. Tyler Clippert, rough outing in the 10th last night. Up for a possible save or a hold'em situation here. And LaRoche on the take, two and one. Yeah, done with the fastball in the mid 90s. And a slider, too. He'll throw a change up occasionally to a right hander. LaRoche just going to see fastball slider. High in the zone. Inside corner again. The 2 1 pitch, a slider from Dunn to LaRoche. Did just enough to come back for a strike. Sometimes as a base steer, the, you'll learn so much on the first throw over from a lefty. Mm. If there's something he picked up right there on the throw over, because he's seen him go to the plate four times now, you pick up the difference and maybe you're thinking about stealing a base. I would imagine he would stay until Ian Desmond's at bat, but you never know. 2-2 to LaRoche with a target away. Adam takes it. No swing, says Brian Gorman. And with nobody out, do you turn loose a young guy who has 219 minor league stolen bases. Did he go? No. Yeah, 3-2, nobody out, LaRoche up. It's a good excuse to give him a steal sign, isn't it? <laughs> you would think. 22-year-old pinch runner over there. Just make sure he goes to the plate first. He's holding. LaRoche, base hit. It almost hit Yuri Perez, so he'll have to stop at second. Two on, nobody out, and now the lead run is on with Ian Desmond coming up. And we'll see if Mike Dunn stays to face him with Ryan Webb ready. The very reason that Perez did not steal that hole at bat is leaving that hole open for the lefty, Adam LaRoche. And the hole was created. LaRoche takes advantage. Pulling it through there and in a 3-2 count. That is a huge knock for the Nationals. And Perez had to hold as he had to get out of the way. That's the second consecutive Marlins reliever not retiring a batter. So Ryan Webb will relieve Mike Dunn here. And the Nats are building a big inning in the bottom of the eighth.
you by Dodge. Go to Dodge.com or visit your local Dodge dealer today. Maybe as soon as this one's over, don't want you to miss a moment of what's happening right here. So on a Saturday afternoon, the Nats are battling back all day long. Tying runs at second base, nobody out. Two weeks from today, Dirks Bentley will be here after the Nats play the Brewers in a day game. And tickets, some of them start as low as $10. Check out the website and come join us. Ryan Webb in the seventh inning last night pitched a one, uh, actually two hitters. He gave up a base hit to Steve Lombardozzi, but then he got Jason Worth on a ground ball. He'll face Ian Desmond here in a game situation. And I don't think Ian Desmond is going to be bunting right here. You would think down by one, first and second, bottom of the eighth. But you got one of your hottest hitters up there who's not real confident in the sacrifice. Well, so the Marlins, we'll Marlins think he is. No. And he's not. Carlos Lee double pumps. There's no play at first. I think Lee thought for a moment about throwing to third base, but Yuri Perez, that's too risky. So the Nets do get the runner to third and one out, and that's the tying run on a 3-6. Man, everybody's scrambling around the infield on that play. Uh, the reason you don't button Desmond right there, number one, he's not comfortable with the sacrifice, but number two, he's swinging it well. Number three, you have to go who's on deck and Danny Espinosa, and with first base open, they'd probably walk him to get to Jesus Flores, so a lot of things going on right there. I think it's the right call, and all in all, it turns out to be a pretty good out by Desmond. Now for Danny Espinosa, speed of Yuri Perez on third base. That's all he has to do is get it anywhere in the outfield for a sacrifice fly. Espinosa, two for four career against Webb. Taking a strike, 87. Chad Tracy next for Jesus Flores. The Nats do have two other catchers, obviously Kurt Suzuki and Sandy Leone. Webb pretty deliberate to the plate. Ian Desmond has a chance to steal second base right here. He's going, and the Marlins will let him have second base. That's got to be a stolen base. And for Ian Desmond, number 17. And check out the jump. Webb pretty long to the plate, long delivery. No throw by John Buck, and now the winning run, the go-ahead run, I should say, is on second base in scoring position. That forces the infield to play in. They're really shallow. Murphy and Reyes on the left side. Lee even with a bag at first, and then a little bit deeper is Donovan Solano, the second baseman. I think Reyes wants to bring him in now, and here he comes. Wheels are turning. Do you walk Danny Espinosa with first base open right here, or do you just pitch carefully to him? Or do you go right after him? Espinosa more of a strikeout guy than Chad Tracy. Strike two. 96. Pull swing, little sink to it. Now you gotta stick your nose in there and fight. Espinosa just got a piece of that baseball. Pretty good slider from Webb down and in. Espinosa just nicks that one to stay alive. Careful if you, if you try to throw a better one right here. The wild pitch is in play. On a ball tailing away, Danny able to get a piece of that one. The Nats have trailed 3 0, 5 3, 6 3, 6 5 now with only a one out here in the eighth. Oh, 
would imagine the contact play is on at third base with the speed of Yuri Perez. Anything on the ground, he should be going. Three fouls in a row by Danny Espinosa. Shortened his swing up right there, trying to put the ball in play. Zimmerman has homered for two runs in this inning. Two hits, a ground ball, a stolen base later. The Nats 90 feet away from tying it. Espinosa called out on a fastball. Two outs. Chad Tracy will bat for Jesus Flores. And John Buck ran out there and said, let's try that front hip sinker. It was a good one. Started on the inner half, ran back down the middle. Strike three looking. And they're going to walk Chad Tracy to get to the shark who just jumped out of the dugout into the on-deck circle. So the bases will be loaded for Roger Bernardino. <laughs> and all the fans know what's coming next. There's been a shark sighting here at Nats Park. Roger Bernardino is one for three career against Ryan Webb and here he comes. Uh, is that any good? As a pinch hitter, Bernardino on the year, one RBI, eight for twenty seven. Great speed in the batter's box at second, at third. That's outside. Throw to third, and it had to be dug out on a hop by Donnie Murphy. Perez down the line, and they were checking him. Yeah, very risky play right there. Got a fastball away with a lefty up. Buck trying to pick off Perez. Nice save by Donnie Murphy. That would have been two runs. Now the count to Bernardina, 2-0. and oh. Pretty good hack on a 2-0 -oh count. And now you're loose. That's a high strike. And it's after all the non-strikes called today, this will be an interesting one to look at. It's a good pitch. Yeah. That's similar to the pitch on which he struck out Espinoza. Looking. 
And Bernardino now 2-2. And the Nats cannot make contact after they had runners at second and third and one out. Espinosa struck out. Bernadina struck out. One run into the ninth. Time for our Cholula Hot Sauce Pitching Recap. Your favorite part of every single game. And today was Christian Garcia. He threw 86 on this changeup. So some mild hot sauce today, but his fastball was as high as 96, bringing the heat and the flavor. And some punch outs of this game. Nice job by Christian Garcia today. Kurt Suzuki takes over behind the plate to catch Tyler Clippard. Yuri Perez stays in the game. He'll be batting in the cleanup spot and playing left field. Clippard rough 10th inning here last night. The Marlins got him for three consecutive hits. After an intentional walk, a sack fly, and that was that. They scored three and one last night's game, nine to seven. Well, the best thing about this is Tyler Clipper getting right back on the horse after last night. Couple of the same hitters. It's like Suzuki's batting eighth in a straight up switch. Clipper ninth. Workus Hernandez, big home run to start the game. Skies getting darker, some ominous looking skies approaching us from the west. As we play top of the ninth in a 6 5 game. Change up in there, 0 2. It's Hernandez, Solano, and then Reyes here in the top of the ninth. That guy. First two hitters in this lineup today. Been on base five times. And that's where the changeup was from Tyler Clipper last night. They got hit that changeup up in the zone.
No balls and two strikes. Interesting what's going on in the Marlins bullpen. It's Heath Bell warming up for a save situation. Not Steve Ciszek who put the game away last night after struggling. Bell their for closer first couple of months a lot of blown saves replaced by Ciszek who got number 12 here last night. Actually number 13 here last night. And the Nats made him sweat that one out. A one two pitch. Pretty good pitch. But the fastball up to Roger Bernardino was a strike. This is definitely a strike. Top of the zone. Yes. Touching the top. Two two now. Clippard goes with the off speed. Way out ahead of it is Gorkis Hernandez. Having a tough time finishing hitters the last couple of nights. Guy that's been doing it all season long. Tyler goes with the fastball, misses down the three and two. Pitch number 10 coming in this at bat. And he slips the change up by him for the first out here in the ninth. A great pitch right there from Tyler Clipper in a 3 2 count. That's the wipeout pitch he's been looking for the last couple of days. Good execution right there, down in the zone, good late movement. And Hernandez betting 3 2 heater gets a change and can't hold up. That'll bring in Donovan Solano, who's one for two career against Clipper. On the corner. The only thing worse as a hitter than swinging at a 3 2 changeup is showing it in Exmo on the replay, <laughs> and then it makes you look like you're 10 times further out in front. Your bat's pointing at the third base dugout by the time the ball arrives. 0 oh 1 to Solano, who has singled, doubled, walked, scored a couple today, and driven one in. Nats have somehow kept Jose Reyes off base today. He's 0 for 4. Fast ball inside, tailing in on the right hander. One ball and two strikes. Suzuki wanted fastball away right there. Got fastball up. Solano chased it high. And try to elevate, go higher right here, and go back to that changeup down and in. Not for the change. Well, according to the radar, it is not looking good. There's a thin line of green and then some yellow and red heading our way. Skies darkening considerably here in the ninth inning. Marlins on top, six to five in a two-two pitch.
Target outer half. You see, this is where Solano has showed you he's in swing mode 2-2. You know, hitter gets into that hard to hold up. You don't necessarily have to throw a strike, especially when you have a ball to play with. See if he'll chase even higher or bounce one because he's swinging. Two two and Clifford gets that call. Solano doesn't like it. Two strikeouts for the outs and Jose Reyes now. Yeah, that's a cutter from Tyler Clifford. Up in the zone gets a call. These two have battled many times. Jose Reyes two for 12 career against Clifford. Couple of walks three strikeouts. And you want the inning to end right here because of who's on deck. The Nats by the way have the top of the order due up in the bottom of the ninth. You want the inning to end right here before the tornado hits. Well that's a nice pleasant <laughs> thought. Thank you. <laughs> you know, looking out to the left. It's looking bad over the third base dugout. It's no bueno. Well, lead off walk home run bottom of the ninth get out of here got to get this guy first Reyes serves it over the glove of Desmond and John Carlos Stanton will bat in the top of the ninth Stanton last night against Clifford walked intentionally in the 10th inning. So his career batting mark against Clipper two for seven three strikeouts. Well the book in this series has been pound him in with two seam fastballs. Let's see if Clipper tries him in or. Or goes straight to the changeup. They're going away. Dip on that one and the base swiped. And then somehow Reyes manages to stay on. He appeared that he was over sliding the bag. That's his 35th of the year. And Bob Davison gave me the big time deke right there. I thought staying with that play, the way he stuck his nose in there, that Reyes slid past the bag. Espinoza kept the tag on him, kept his hand on there, and it looked like he was ready to ring him up but he did keep his hand on there. Good call. Does that take the bat out of Stanton's hands. Do you consider walking him now and pitching to Carlos Lee. I think he's got to get a little push right there off the base and hope he doesn't notice. They say it's a game of fingertips. Oh no that's inches right. One ball one strike. What's the difference on a play like that. Stanton with a foul ball. Now it's one and two. That's entertaining. No thought of walking him. Flags are starting to come to life on top of the scoreboard and out in left field here. Runner going to third. Swing and a miss. Clifford strikes out the side in the top of the ninth. And here we go. Heath Bell to face Worth, Harper, and Zimmerman in a one run game.
Prochaska was outstanding against Washington in Miami a week and a half ago, and he's 10 and 5 career against the Nats. Edwin Jackson looking for number 10 for Washington. He's beaten the Cardinals and the Cubs on this homestand. He'll try to make it a three-peat. One o'clock, Nats extra. First pitch, 135. Masson 2 HD tomorrow. Bottom of the ninth inning. Heath Bell, 19 saves. He's blown six. Top of the order coming up. And if you're out of town on a day like this, you're probably safe from the weather, but you might be missing some baseball. It is about to pour. Look over the left field fence. MLB.tv. Nationals take them with you everywhere this season on your connected device. HD quality live online. So here's Heath Bell. Look at the wind coming in. Look at this. This is crazy. Right out over the left field foul pole. Debris coming I mean, into debris. the ballpark. And uh, some of the ground crew guys are on the field a moment ago warning the umpires that something was about to happen. And we have high winds at Nationals Park with the bottom of the ninth coming up. I'm pretty sure I'd rather be batting right now than in the field. This but is here, not safe, Carp. Here comes the tarp. They're going to put the tarp on at 356. And if you've got friends at the ballpark, text them right now, folks, and tell them to get underneath on the concourse. It's going to take a while for the lower bowl to be emptied here to get everybody where they should be, but very violent conditions arriving at Nationals Park here. Well, the one good thing is there's about a billion rally napkins on the field. So the tarp goes on the field at 3.56 p.m., Two hours and 50 minutes exactly from this one, the time this one starts. And if our audio sounds a little different, we have just closed our windows up here at the highest level of Nationals Park. Debris blowing off our windows. And so we will keep you posted on this situation. ESPN News in the meantime, while the grounds crew does courageous work to get that tarp out. Bottom of the ninth coming up at some point. We'll join you from Nationals Park when baseball is about to be played.
about to resume in the next minute or so. Mark Burley. Well, today he went seven innings, three runs on five hits for the Marlins. Ryan Zimmerman has had a big day with a walk, a single, a two-run homer. Bryce Harper is at a home run, been hit by a pitch and scored a run. Uh, but all of that is nice, and it boils down to the bottom of the ninth. The Nats are down six to five, top of the order coming up. And for the last five or six minutes, FP, Heath Bell has been warming up, not in the bullpen, but actually out on the mound, and we will get this thing going. Will it be the final three outs? Will it be a couple of runs? We shall see. Well, top of the order, Worth, Harper, and Zimmerman for the Nats, and they'll be facing Heath Bell. Three-pitch guy, fastball, curveball change. Now fastball in the low 90s. He'll throw the curveball 27% of the time in the low 80s and an occasional changeup in the mid-80s. So pretty much fastball in that hard 12-6 curveball from Heath Bell. So it's Bell against Worth. Jason today, 0 for 4. And this ball game resumes at 629 after a two hour and 33 minute rain delay. Jason Worth career against Heath Bell is two for nine with a walk. Several hundred of our hardiest fans have stuck around for the end of this one. One way or the other and that's a strike call one one. This situation if you're Jason Worth trying to get on base, obviously, but take a strike nine, go to work. Quirk is Hernandez, the center fielder, is playing about 380 feet from home plate. Obvious no doubles defense by the Marlins here. Heath Bell, 19 saves on the year, but he's let six get away, and he throws a fastball by Jason Worth, one ball and two strikes. And if you're wondering what happens during a rain delay, I'm sure the Nationals hitters, especially the do-ups this inning, hitting in the cage underneath, staying loose, staying active because you knew you had a big three outs left. Target is on the outside corner and Bell misses out there. Two balls, two strikes. And of course, this is meaningful. Braves are up at New York, eight to two, and now they're delayed by rain. That ball game pretty far along, and Jason Worth will foul one upstairs. And it's the be best velocity I've seen from Heath Bell against the Nationals this year. A couple of 96s back to back to Jason Worth. Bryce Harper is next, then Ryan Zimmerman here, bottom of the ninth inning. All three outfielders extremely deep. Fields in remarkably good condition. The outfield took a lot of rain, but the infield was covered early, and it's looking fine. Worth another one out of play. All fastballs from Heath Bell to Jason Worth. Yeah, that is a no doubles defense. And I think with a wet surface in the outfield, the outfielders play deeper than deep to cut off the gaps because the ball's going to skip, skip on the wet grass. Drew Storen in case there's a top of the 10th. And Worth will lean back from a high tide fastball. The count's full. How big is this pitch? Number eight of this at bat coming. And now Worth will step out. Several hundred fans down around the first base dugout having the time of their lives probably the best seats they've ever had making lots of noise here <laughs> little victory dance we'll see about that worth on three and two well hit center field this game is tied <laughs> Jason Worth with his fifth of the year was that worth a two and a half hour wait? Unbelievable. Sit around for two and a half hours, cold turkey. You walk up there against 96 miles an hour, a 3 2 pitch, and you tie the game. And a seventh blown save of the year for Heath Bell.
And now you've got Harper, Zimmerman, and Yuri Perez all coming up with nobody out. That is officially the biggest hit for Jason Worth as a national. Unbelievable. Here's Bryce Harper. I mean, they've got this crowd of 20 people going crazy. <laughs> fastball up. Hey, a couple of foul balls. The more fastballs you see, the better chance you have as a hitter. And Jason Worth in the eighth pitch of that at-bat against Heath Bell goes deep to tie this game up. Unbelievable. Harper now. And he'll pull it hard. The count's even. One ball, one strike. And you were just wondering if Heath Bell was going to pull out that nasty curveball he has. It's in the mid-80s. a 12-6 downer any time in that at-bat. He just kept pumping fastball after fastball. Cut a few of them to work, but left that last one, 3-2, right up over the plate. Unbelievable. Bryce Harper pulls another one. Bryce Harper went upper deck right center way back in the fifth inning. Yeah, four days ago in the fifth inning, Bryce Harper with his 18th home run of the year, towering shot in the upper deck. That's where the big boys go, upper tank, right center field. And Harper will strike out. Heath Bell, nothing but off speed to him. And now Ryan Zimmerman. I check by out the way, homer. that homer by Worth sets a new Nationals single season record. You know, that's officially the most fired up I've ever seen Jason Worth, too. And a 3-2 pitch, biggest hit as a national by far. You talk about the score in New York, 8-2 Braves. And he comes up after two hours and 30 minutes and has maybe his best at-bat of the year and his biggest hit as a nat. It's good stuff. Fastball is up to Ryan Zimmerman. Zimmerman, career against Heath Bell, two for six. Todd Titchener will call that a strike up in the zone, outer half. So the Nats have hit four more home runs today. And Zimmerman out ahead of that one will follow one ball, two strikes. And of course, Yuri Perez scheduled a hit. Looks like Tyler Moore will bat for him. Perez came in to run for Michael Morris back in the eighth. Has played the left field for an inning. So Davey Johnson throwing the home run bats up there, trying to put an end to this one. Ryan almost hit by that running fastball, two and two. Nats have hit 30 home runs in their last 11 games. That's the most since the 2006 Atlanta Braves did it in July. They hit 34. 30 home runs in the last 11 games. And Zimmerman, look out! That ball screaming into the seats. Today's copyrighted telecast. Presented by authority of the Washington Nationals, may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Washington Nationals. 2-2 pitch. Zimmerman strikes out. Well, you just got to wonder why Heath Bell didn't try one of those against Jason Worth. It's nasty. Now the pinch hitter will be Tyler Moore for Yuri Perez. And this game is one out away from going extra innings. Tyler Moore has never faced Heath Bell. Getting ahead with a fastball, 96. Well placed, 96. Middle away. So then he throws the breaking ball and it's 0-2. 
Nets extra coming up next presented by W.B. Mason whenever this one is over. And after all of that this game is going to the 10th inning as Tyler Moore strikes out. Heath Bell gives up a home run to Jason Worth strikes out the side and this marathon is going even longer. A big one tying the game in the bottom of the ninth inning. And a couple of changes we'll update you on in a moment. Nats are making their postseason push, and you can be there for every key play. Text Nationals to 29292 for starting lineups. And in game alerts you cannot afford to miss. Well, in case you missed it, an eight pitch at bat for Jason Worth and a 3 2 fastball up from Heath Bell. Bell knew it as soon as he hit it. Worth knew it as soon as he hit it. Into the red seats. Big time bomb. Extends this game another inning. Look at that dugout. How pumped are they? I mean, we've seen that dugout excited this year. That might be the most pumped we've seen it. That is great. <laughs> All right, Drew Storen now to face Carlos Lee, Justin Ruggiano, and John Buck in the top of the tenth. Tyler Moore stays in to play left field. And Drew Storen on for his 24th game of the year. Three pitch guy, fastball slaughter change. Been throwing the change up more this year than last year, 3% of the time. And a fastball averaging at 94 miles an hour. Carlos lead today a base hit in two trips. He's walked twice scored a run. And Drew Storen gets a strike call. Drew Storen faced Carlos Lee in the ninth inning last night flight him out. So Lee career one for six. With a walk against Drew, he's made contact every time. Except for that base on balls. And that ball hacked high in the air out of play right side. Well, if you're here right now and you got good wheels, good chance of getting a foul ball. <laughs> Official attendance announced hours ago of 28,000. 816 a lot of folks for safety's sake we could certainly understand yeah. that made their way to the metro or their automobiles as soon as they could that was some severe weather that rolled its way through here hope you all are okay at home and a big breaking ball the killer slider by drew Storen for the strikeout been waiting for that one I mean, just a good sequence all the way around. Backdoor the two seam fastball for strike one. Climb the ladder for strike two and goes nasty slider down and away for strike three. So a three pitch Sia for Drew Storm to Carlos Lee.
Justin Ruggiano has reached on two errors today. He has a double and two trips. And then Storen throws him a first pitch slider. For a strike, Ruggiano 0 for 3 career against Drew Storen coming into this series. And it looks like Drew's getting pretty confident. He must have a good feel for that slider this evening. Or you just think every time out he's getting stronger and stronger, right? More confident. He's thrown him three in a row and he has him one and two now. Suzuki behind the plate now since the ninth inning. And then the 97 mile an hour fastball all the way back to the barrier. The counts three and two. And a couple of overthrows there with two strikes. And then you go back to that 3 2 slider. He got a pretty good feel for that pitch. Target right down the middle on 3 and 2. Storing locks him up with another killer slider. Two down. As good as we've seen him throw that breaking ball this year. You know, even though he throws 95, 96 miles an hour as a hitter, you have to respect that. Even though the last two were Yanks and nowhere near, Justin Ruggiano thinking he's going to challenge me 3 2. Drew Storm probably has a better feel for the slider right now in the fastball. Pulls the string for strike three. And that Ruggiano, one. not near. Wow. Next up, John Buck. He's one for four with an RBI single today. Looks like a former net will be pitching the bottom of the 10th, Chad Godin, who we saw here last night. And he was pretty good. Storing's fastball high in the zone for a strike. Counts even 1 1. A two seam fastball, run back piece. Funny how after a two and a half hour rain delay, the zone gets bigger. It was small all day long from Todd Titchener. Nationals pitching staff, eight strikeouts going back to the seventh inning. Between Stammen, Garcia, Clippard, and now Drew Storen. By the way, I think Ross Detweiler deserved to get off the hook today. Christian Garcia had a great outing, but Ross just totally. Not in sync with the umpire from the start of the game. Couldn't get a called strike. Gave up a couple of homers in the first inning. Did not deserve to lose this game. Two balls and a strike to John Buck. They just can't hit that breaking ball right now. Well, he's able to throw it in fastball counts and make it look like a strike to where you can't recognize it as a hitter. You got so much fastball on your mind. Hard to pick up the slider rotation. That's another dirty one. 
from Juice Storm. And a 2-2 pitch. Goes with a fastball, and Buck is late for it. Now, when you have a power pitcher throwing you sliders when he's behind in the count, now all of a sudden as a hitter, you get caught in between. You're not guaranteed a fastball when you're ahead. And if you get caught in between, you can't hit either. Slider again. Drew Storen strikes out the side in the top of the tenth. Maybe the best he's thrown the ball this year. Drew Storen is back, folks. It's official. That slider today, the best he's had all year. Adam LaRoche straight ahead. movie that's exactly what it looks like they pile everybody in right behind the dugout for the shots then they often will have some cutouts of fake fans to fill things in but these guys are the real deal and they're having the time of their season right here this evening getting a chance to sit down close to the Nats dugout and make lots of noise a couple of thousand pictures will be taken by that bunch so here we go to the bottom of the tent former Nat Chad Godan who pitched pretty well here last night. He pitched the ninth inning. He did give up a walk to Jason Worth, but he struck out Ryan Zimmerman to quell the Nats rally. Got the game to extra innings where they won it. And he was actually the winning pitcher, his third win of the year. Yeah, three pitches from Godin. Fastball slider change. Fastball in the low 90s. Slider in the low 80s. Change up in the mid 80s. Adam LaRoche, you look at NL leaders, 29 home runs. Looking for 30 right here. Adam is one for four, base hit last time up. And he was thinking about ending this affair right here, right now. He pulled a base hit to right field in the eighth. So it's LaRoche, Desmond, and Espinoza. Adam LaRoche hits one hard to right because they're playing so deep. That's a base hit. And that is a line drive that usually a right fielder could at least challenge and maybe attempt to catch. Well, I said it earlier in this game with John Carlos Stanton. He hit a ground ball to Ryan Zimmerman. I said any elevation right there, and it's a home run. Same thing goes here. Can't hit a line drive much harder than LaRoche did. Just got a little topspin on it. 
But either way, leadoff man on here in the 10th for the Nats. Game on. He's now three for five career against Godin. Ian Desmond has never faced this right-hander. Marlins expecting a possible bunt here. But Ian Desmond, as we saw back in the eighth inning, not really a bunt guy. I mean, there's not really anybody in this lineup that is. Davey Johnson playing for the base hitter, the extra base hit, to go ahead and try to win this thing. And Kurt Suzuki maybe a bunter. Lombardozzi a bunter. After that, the rest of these guys hack. That's a base hit to right field. LaRoche will make the turn. He's still going. Here comes the throw. The winning run is at third base with nobody out. And that's where the no doubles defense hurts you late in the game. When a ball hit that hard in the hole, if you're playing straight up, there's no way Adam LaRoche goes first to third on John Carlos Stanton. He's got a big arm in right field, but because he's playing deep, nothing hit over his head or the game's over. LaRoche with a good read, a good turn at second base. Is able to go first to third. You see him check where Stanton is right there. He makes his mind up for himself. Bo Porter had the stop sign up. But good base runners don't need a third base coach. They're going to walk Danny Espinosa. Load the bases. Play the infield in. And see what they can do with Kurt Suzuki. Well. I mean they're playing the percentages right now for their life. But this is a good move for the Nats. They walk Danny Espinosa to get to one of their most clutch hitters lately, Kurt Suzuki. And then Danny uh, Espinosa going to first base. Corey Brown steps into the on-deck circle in the pitcher's spot. Here comes Ozzie Guillen to talk about defense. We're going to be talking about a five-man infield right here for the Marlins. I think he's pulling Justin Ruggiano in. So five man infield hope that Suzuki hits it on the ground if he hits it in the air the game's over although with Adam LaRoche at third base it's going to have to be a respectable fly ball to Ruggiano right at second base near Ian Desmond and you're just trying to cut down the holes if you've never seen a five man infield before a lot of times it's it's just to get in the, the hitter's head. It's a look they haven't seen before. But I always thought that the guy in the middle should be to one side, excuse me, one side of the pitcher because the pitcher has to act as a defender here. Kurt Suzuki against Chad Godin, seen him in the American League. He's 0 for 4 career. Godin off the full windup here. And Suzuki saw a pitch up and he was trying to hack a fly ball somewhere. I'm not Kurt Suzuki. You think you have the day off? You're going to sit around and watch a Saturday day game, and all of a sudden you find yourself up, bottom of the tenth, bases loaded, nobody out in the pennant race. Yeah, then you get to catch a couple of innings and a chance to win it with your bat. So there's a fielder in left center, a fielder in right center, five infielders. And Suzuki, a swing and a foul tip on a hard sinking fastball. So there are seven defensive players within 110 feet of the hitter. And look at the outfield. Straightaway center is definitely open right now for Kurt Suzuki. Take a couple of big hacks for the ball club, maybe short enough with two right here, and just try to drive something to the outfield. Chad Godin, hard thrower, capable of strikeouts. And Suzuki up the middle. They've got one play, and that's to home. And that will be called a 7-2 force out at home plate. How about Justin Ruggiano with that play? That's an outfielder right there making a, a running play with a good throw to John Buck to get the force. Now maybe you go back into the outfield after that. We'll see what Ozzie Guillen does. So now you got the conventional double play in play. In between hop on the run. Pretty good catch by Buck on the back end. That might have been a short hop. So Corey Brown, the pinch hitter, they're going to leave Ruggiano on the infield. Corey Brown is a tough guy to double up because he runs so well. And they're sticking with the five-man infield. Ruggiano took a step out to left field. They brought him back in, and now they're trying to decide where he should play. Looks like they're going to flip-flop him with Jose Reyes and put Reyes up the middle because he's quick on the pivot 
for a double play, and the other guy might get in his way. It's a good matchup for the Nats. Corey Brown's a fly ball hitter. And he lays off that one. It's important for Corey to be smart here. Get a good pitch to hit and drive it somewhere. Third stint with the Nationals this year. He's a Florida native from Tampa. And the Nats have now used all of their position players except for Sandy Leone. One oh pitch that's in the outfield. That's a game winner. It appears Stanton drops it. The Nationals win it seven to six in the bottom of the 10. Corey Brown. Welcome back to the big leagues. You'll never have a bigger RBI. Wow.